Hi there, this is Dr. Matthew J. Trom from Engineer Inc. And I've prepared another experiment for our at-home fluid mechanics laboratories, part of a mechanical engineering fluid mechanics course taught completely online. This is a, another laboratory that would be done by students um, at home in support of that course. Um, some of you uh, may recognize this as a Stokes viscometer or a falling ball viscometer. The way that this is normally used in a fluid mechanics course is I've got some fluid of unknown viscosity in this graduated cylinder and I've got a couple of ball bearings. There we are. And I measure the diameter and the mass of the ball bearings. I drop them through the fluid of unknown viscosity and I can back out the viscosity from uh, the amount of time it takes the ball to fall a known distance. Um, that's how this is normally done, but if you'll recall from my viscometry cup video, um, I have a way of measuring the viscosity. So I know the viscosity of this fluid, and so I am actually using this experiment in a different way. Instead of using it to determine fluid viscosity, I'm using it to measure drag forces. And so it will actually be used as part of uh, an external flow, flow over a sphere uh, component in um, a course, a fluid mechanics course. So um, the fluid that I'm using, again, is this uh, generic corn syrup which costs less than two dollars a bottle. I need um, 2,000 milliliters of it so that that worked out to be um, about five bottles worth but uh, again it's going to be used in the viscometry experiment as well so we don't need that much. Um, and I've got um, my graduated cylinder here and I've got it marked with a band on the top and a band on the bottom. Uh, those bands are 25 centimeters apart uh, and I measure that distance with a ruler and I leave a little room at the top so when I drop a sphere in uh, it's given some time in the fluid to reach terminal velocity and I've got a little room on the bottom so that the wall effect uh, as the sphere approaches the bottom and the drag force changes uh, doesn't impact the fall time. So I'm actually now going to use this experiment to determine the drag on a stainless steel sphere. Um, here's the stainless steel sphere that I'm going to demo for you. This one happens to be 55 grams uh, weighed on my trusty Ohaus scale and I've already determined the diameter um, just using uh, my measurement instrument there. So the way that this is going to work is I'm going to grab this sphere again made out of stainless steel um, having measured the uh, density, I'm sorry, having measured the mass and having measured the diameter, I already know its density, so I can use that in my um, <clears throat> viscometer uh, equation. So I'm going to put it up here and I'm going to let go. And if I were to do this experimentally, um, I would start time when the sphere passes that first band and I'll stop time when the sphere, sphere passes the second band and use the time of fall and the distance between those two bands to determine the velocity of the sphere. Um, it will fall at a terminal velocity. That means that uh, the drag force pushing the sphere upwards is equal to the force of gravity pulling it downwards so the velocity doesn't change. Um, and because I know everything in that equation um, except for the force, the drag force, I can calculate the drag force um, and from that run uh, some more analysis. So I'm gonna drop the ball and tell you when I would start time and when I would stop time and then I'm gonna show you how to fish the ball out. So we're gonna drop on three, ready? One, two, three, start time, stop time, Oop, and that's the end of the experiment. Um, it turns out if I use spheres of smaller diameter, you can see here I've got a couple of smaller diameter spheres that I'm testing, that, that fall time is a little bit slower uh, easier to measure, but then the flip side is the small spheres have a tendency to float towards the wall um, and that ruins the, the, the shape of um, the flow field around the sphere. So I'm actually experimenting now trying to find the right sphere diameter to get a long enough fall time, but also so that the sphere falls fast enough that it stays away from the wall. Anyway, the way that I fish the sphere out is I use a neodymium magnet. So we'll use a neodymium magnet here to attract the sphere, whoops, and lift it out of my corn syrup, like so, 
Okay, and then I can grab the spear with my other hand, um, which is not available because I'm using it to hold the camera, and repeat the experiment again. So I would repeat the experiment a statistically meaningful number of times. I've been using 12 repeat experiments, and then I can get an average and a standard deviation for the fall time, and from that, again, with the known viscosity of the fluid in the tube, back out um, all the fluid properties that I need to determine uh, the drag force on this sphere. So that is the end of this demonstration video. Uh, look for more demo videos from Engineer Inc. showcasing our at-home fluid mechanics laboratories for an upcoming online course and uh, I will see you in the future. Thanks for your attention.